The problem is, is that home doesn't really transform, does it? Everything's there that's just the same as when you left it. You've just been on the mountain. And it's good. It's good to be here. Got to go home. Bibles. 1 John 4, 16. 1 John 4, 16. If you don't get the repeated words in this one, I don't know how you can miss it. Like, <laughs> John is being plainly obvious. 1 John 4, 16 and following. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one, who's, the one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Two repeated words. Love, fear. We get some strange fears, don't we? How many of y'all have a weird phobia? Yeah, you don't want other people to know it all the time either, do you? Because the moment they know it, they exploit it. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll, I'll just be real because I'm, I'm leaving and I won't have much opportunity for y'all to get me with this one. Egyptian gods, animal heads on human bodies, mm-mm. But especially Egyptian, Egyptian gods. They freaked me out as a little kid. Night at the Museum is the worst horror film on the place, face of the planet. I, I can't do it. As soon as they, those freaky bird heads and dog heads come walking out of there, I'm done. Yep. Ozark student put on a, a horse head one time. I about punched him, knocked him out, and got fired. And it was almost worth it. <laughs> For other reasons, though. Yeah, he needed a good swift kick in the rear end every now and then, but that's all right. I'm kidding. He's great. He's fantastic. We got weird fears, don't we? Y'all got them. I, I got to tell you, though, a conversation I had, move it. It, it was weird. There was this girl um, in their van going, going to some place to eat and a whole youth group there. This little girl, she's like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm like afraid of teeth. And I was like, really? Like, what does that mean? You, you know who you are. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm afraid, and it's like, I brush them, but I can't touch them. I don't like to look at them. I don't like the dentist, you know, and dentist, that's a normal fear, but it was like, so I was like, you can't do this, and she just kind of creeped out, like, she either wigged out with that, and, but, the, okay, so that's a weird fear, um, but then the statements after that, I was like, oh, no, I should not be in this van. I, I'm going to, they're going to murder me, like, something's going to happen here, because then there's this boy right behind her, and, and he goes, oh, I like teeth. Sometimes I want to pull them out, put them in a sandwich, and eat them up. <laughs> and then he just smiled really big, and I was like, you're going to kill me, aren't you? And I just backed up, and I was like, okay. There's another dude in the cafeteria I was talking to, and he's like, I've got this phobia. Uh, he said he has, he has nightmares, and, and he has a phobia of uh, his food eating him. I like that one. Like, that was okay. And so I just picture this giant taco with velociraptor teeth, like, chomping down on this poor guy. And I was saying that to him, and the whole time he's just cringing about it. I'm like, oh, this is serious. And he's like, yeah, don't tell people your fears. They exploit them. You know, can you imagine the weird conversations between, you know, the food guy and the teeth guy? Like, <laughs> what? Yeah, I don't know how that works whatsoever. Today's contrast is love and fear. Love and fear. We talked quite a bit about love on the, the first, or my first day, the second day too, with light and dark and, and, and how love is in, in there with the light there. And, and so yeah, that, that's a good thing, but we, we got more to do with love. One thing that's been made abundantly clear this week is that we do not have to fear death. Caitlin helped us with that, you know, up here when, when, when I was up here a couple days ago. Jody, last night, my word, that girl, like, I've got quote after quote written down, like, man, poetry just flowing out of her. I couldn't write fast enough. She's so fast, like, it was good. But she made it abundantly clear and affirms that we don't have to be afraid of 
death whatsoever, that Christ is our advocate for us. And our text affirms that perfect love drives out fear. We don't have to be afraid of God's judgment because of the atoning sacrifice of Jesus Christ has made us perfect. His blood covers us. There is no fear of any kind of punishment. There's no more roller coaster faith. Christ took it all. Christ has unshackled us. Christ has made us free to live in obedience in the shadow of the cross. And the obedience isn't burdensome. We want to do that because of what he's done for us. I want to be more like Jesus. And we've wept hard and we have celebrated harder as we have stepped into the light. This has been a good week thus far, right? We ain't done yet, though. I mean, it has been good. Now what? I mean, does following Christ in obedience mean that we just have to stand around like this all day? I mean, it seems that I indicated that yesterday. And yes, we do need to stand firm. I mean, there's no question about it, and, and we don't need to flirt with the line that shackles us anymore. Like, getting as far away from that as possible over here in the shadow of the cross is where we need to be. There's no question about it. I mean, I mean but, but come on. Do we really need to do that all the time? And the answer to that is no, because Jesus, yes, he died, and he died on the cross, and we die as well. He calls us to that. But Jesus resurrected. And as Jody said last night, like, Jesus is not just a good way to die, he's a really good way to live as well. That quote, I just went, mm, I'm done. Let it sink in for a second, though. Jesus, in his example of death, Jesus is not just a good way to die. If we need to die to ourselves. He's a good way to live. Abundant, whole, pure life. Concentrating on who we want to be, not what we want to avoid. Uh, and it, it's amazing what he brings to the table. We've also resurrected because we're free and the Son has set us free. We're free indeed. What do we do with our new freedom? What do we do with that? Well, we love. Hopefully we continue walking in the light and remembering. And I hope you wrote down the love test, the obedience test that's there, the, the belief test. And with today's message in this contrast of love and fear, we've got these panels that are up here. I'm sure you saw them pull these suckers out. Like I could watch your eyes. It's like what's going on on the stage kind of thing. And, by the way, props to CIY. Their artwork is phenomenal this year. That, yeah, man. They're, they're, they've got something for everybody. It's good. But, yeah, we've got, these, we've got these panels up here. And kind of depending on your angle and the camera angle, but those of you that are kind of sitting on this side over here, what's up, balcony, you guys can see. I got you all up there. You guys see the word what? Love. What do you all see over here? Fear. What do you all see in the middle? Flalev, lovelay. Ah. I know what fear is, I know what love is. If you're in the middle, that's like the new flavor at Starbucks right now. Like that's what, that's what you're getting. There's one girl that's like, yes, no, I'm totally making that up. Like, uh, no, she, she's convincing me that it's true now. Let's, let's go get some later, all right, yeah. I mean, it's a contrast. Love and fear, they don't have anything to do with each other. Perfect love drives out fear. What word are you drawn to? I'm not talking about because of where you're sitting today. What word are you drawn to consistently? When the Spirit prompts, when the Spirit says go, when you watch Kingdom Worker videos, and when you, when you think about what the Lord is asking you to do in your schools and in your home and with your family, what word are you drawn to? I couldn't do that. There's no way. I mean, if you truly believe that Christ has set you free from the fear of judgment and punishment, then the good news is, is that, you, that you want to share the love of God with other people. And you don't have to fear with that. Love is one of the greatest indicators that you are stepping into the light. On the contrast, 
fear is one of the greatest indicators that you're shrinking back into darkness. And so when I'm asking you, you know, have you changed? And you say yes, and I'm saying how do you know? And you're basing it on what's going on in here. And again, this is good. It's the start. It's the catalyst. It's where it's going to, this stuff that we're doing all week long, like propels us to go home for permanent change, permanently, consistently stepping into the light. And when you fear, you want to just shrink back in darkness. So there's stuff that's out there that's scary when it comes to what Jesus wants us to do with our faith. And that we're propelled because we've been so transformed by the love of community and the love of Christ that what we got to replace coming after me with coming after somebody else. Because that reckless love of God wants to wreck them like it's wrecked you. And you know the tears and the pain that comes with that, but there is joy. Have you had joy this week? Well, yeah, you have. How are others going to get it? Because they're not here. Not afraid of judgments. Don't have to fear sharing my faith with others. And why? Because the same advocate that stands before you in judgment is the same advocate that stands with you as you lead others to him in love. He's not just there for you when, you're, when, when he's on the cross. He's there with you given the Holy Spirit. Jesus said that he had to leave. He had to ascend to heaven so that there would be room for the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is also called our advocate. Because it's the Godhead. They're all, all members of the Trinity. The oneness of them are all our advocate, fighting for us, propelling us, pushing us. And so Jesus humbly got out of the way so that the Holy Spirit could come in. And the same Holy Spirit that was dwelling in John when he was writing this, and Peter, and Paul, and, and, and the apostles, is the same Holy Spirit that dwells within you. So what are you afraid of? Well, that's the problem is, is that w when the advocate, advocate stands with us, we start shrinking back in fear sometimes, and what we're afraid of is the what-ifs. That's what we do in our hearts or even verbally. Well, what if? You know, fear drives us to ask, to ask, what if no one listens to what I have to say? Love asks, what if they hear the message and actually believe? I mean, that, that's love, that's faith. Fear drives us to ask, what if they ask me something about God that I don't know? Has anybody ever had that fear? Like if you start sharing your faith, they're going to ask you those hard, hard questions. What if there's, you know, can God create a rock so big that if he can't flip it over? It's like, what? I don't, I don't care. I want to throw a rock at you. You know, like, <laughs> what? But fear, like, in, in all seriousness, it's like, oh, but this person, you know, claims to be an atheist or this, and so what if they start asking me things that I don't know? And love asks, well, love tells us just open your Bible. Start reading. You, you have a community. Ask somebody about it. It's okay to say, I don't know, but I'll find out, and that gives you another opportunity then to share with them. That's, that's okay. But we let our fear override that. Our fear asks, what if they get mad at me for shoving Jesus down their throats? Love asks, what if you simply open up to a good friend or family member about the awesome things that God is doing in your life this week? You don't need to cram their garbage down their throat. Just tell them how Christ has set you free. It's pretty hard to argue with a personal testimony, and Paul says it, that he is also the gospel. It's not just that Christ dying on the cross is the gospel, but it's my gospel. You are a walking gospel because of what Christ has done in you. So what are you so afraid of? Fear asks, what if I'm rejected? We all have that fear of rejection. Love reminds us to believe that you are accepted in Christ and by Christ and in your community and by your community here. Nothing can ever snatch the love of God away from you. And some will reject, some will hurt, some will even persecute. Christ knows exactly how you feel with that. And he counts it all joy and so do we. Don't be afraid of their response. Just keep loving in obedience. You're not called to fear about the way people respond. That's on them. You're called to just bring it to them over and over and over again. Jesus had absolutely no associates when he, when he walked the earth here. 
They're, you, you know what I'm talking about? Like, you've got those kids in school. It's like, you don't really know them all that well. And they, you you kind of do. Sometimes you're in the same circle. Some, they're, they're, just, they're not a good friend, but they're not an enemy. They're, they're just kind of there. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, Jesus had none of that. Everybody either loved him or hated him. He was the most polarizing figure on the face of the planet. And, and so you, you either follow him wholeheartedly or you just reject him and, and then people led him to get killed. And the same goes with us because they said, Jesus said, if they reject me, they're going to reject you as well. Welcome to the club of losers. It's glorious. Because you don't have to keep up with the popularity trends and this and that and all of that kind of junk. Does your youth group have that kid in it? Do you, do you know what I mean by that kid? Let's put it in quotes, air quotes. Do, do you know that kid? All right. Youth leaders in here, do you know that kid? Do you know that kid, kid that at one moment is absolutely driving you crazy and you want to stone them Old Testament style? <laughs> but then the next minute, like you turn around and they're phenomenally leading something over here. They're doing some act of kind, and, and you're just going, huh, now do you all know that kid? <laughs> yeah, you do. Quit pointing. <laughs> A little cat right here, is it you? Yeah, that kid knows, it, knows it's them. If you don't know who that kid is in your youth group, it's you. <laughs> it's you. I, had, I was a youth pastor for a number of years, and I, I had several of those kids. Andy was a, a senior high kid, and, and his junior year, man, he was involved with our junior high. He kept wanting to work with our youth ministry, like our junior high kids. I was like, yeah, that's great. And so Andy uh, went with us as a leader to a Believe conference, and I had no idea, but, you know, in the dorms at night, he's staying with all these kids, and all the boys had gathered in his room, and he taught them how to play poker, Okay. And he won, like he sharked them, and he won all of their money and told them that he wants to, like, because he was so compelled with, like, the mission that they were supporting, you know, whatever the, the, you know, the engage type thing that they were doing. And so he got all of their money and, like, hey, guys, we're going to put this in the offering then. And so he put it all in the offering. I had to pay for their meals going home. <laughs> like, their parents are all upset about this. He's that kid. You, you, he's got the right motive, like he was so compelled about what was going on on the mission field. But wrong, wrong method to get money. Like, go get a job and give. Quit stealing from others and quit teaching them how to gamble. Like, yeah, my buddy Will, he was a seventh grader. And I had a youth leader who tragically lost his mother at a, at a young age, you know, like, like right then and there. Like, the mom died before her time, and it was really unexpected. And so Will, this seventh grader, goes up to the youth leader. Youth leaders pour into kids when bad things happen. No, Will was like, he was just compelled. And he wanted to go to Jeff, and he wanted to talk to him, and he wanted to pray with him about that. And so, you know, Jeff is being nice, like, with, with Will and everything. But then Will started saying, he goes, I understand exactly how you feel. Now, Will's mom's still alive. Like, he hasn't lost his parents. And Will, in his, in his precious seventh grade heart, was like, you know, two weeks ago, my cat and he, and he told the story of his cat. And, and I get it. Like, we love our pets. If, if Chewbacca and you were drowning, I'd pull Chewbacca out. Like, you better, you better grab his tail. I love my dog more than I love most people. You know, like, I, I really do. I know, forgive me, Lord, but I, I get it. But to compare the loss of a cat with your, with your mother, he wasn't getting it. And he prayed and prayed so hard for Jeff. But he prayed more about his cat and, like, his own hurt than he did... Bless his heart. He's trying. He's that kid. And he's really trying. I mean, Manny, uh, he let a homeless guy live in the closet of our youth building uh, right outside of the fifth and sixth grade, like, like, classroom area like and so so Sunday morning fifth and sixth graders are all running to class and stuff and there's a homeless dude in the closet there. And, and this was going, before I wreck it, before I knew it, it had been a week and a half. And he's, Manny and his brother are bringing this homeless man food and sharing the scriptures with him and helping him out and water and trying to, like, bring him job applications from Taco Bell and stuff. Like, I mean, they're really trying to help this man that we don't know and doesn't need to be around our fifth and sixth graders until we kind of know what he's all about. You know, like, protect. They, they're, 
right motive, wrong, wrong method for sure. Uh, David, he was that kid for me. Oh man, I, David drove me absolutely crazy because if I said it was black, he said it was white. He was my contrast all the time. Good leader, but man, I just wanted to kill him. And he was mouthing off, mouthing off every time I'd say, hey, you know, we were at move. I'm like, every time I'd say, hey guys, we're going to go this way. I don't want to. I think we should go over here and eat. And it's like, I just, finally, just, David, just shut up and lead well. Just knock it off. And I want you to just, he's a senior at this point. I'm like, I just need you to shut your mouth and lead by example. Whatever. And he stomps off. I'm just like, oh, choke him. That kid. That night then, I'm in the dorms, and I was knocking on some doors, like, hey, guys, time, time for bed, that kind of stuff. And, he, and, and then uh, one of the youth sponsors that he, that he really looked up to, they were both football players, uh, Todd was in his room, and I said, hey, guys, time for bed. And he goes, what? It's fine. Todd's in my room. He's a, he's a sponsor. And, and Todd knew what I had said to him, and he just goes, wham, and just hits David hard. I mean, this is a big dude. Hits him hard in the arm. And David's like, ow, why'd you do that? He goes, every time you speak, I'm going to punch you. Now, as the youth pastor, I should probably stop this. And David goes, what? And he goes, wham! <laughs> David goes, ow! And he goes, wham! He goes, if you start crying, I'm hitting you twice. <laughs> I just went, good night, boys. And I just backed out and walked away. <laughs> yep. It's like... At the end of the week, at the end of the week... Music blaring out of David's room at 1.30, 2 in the morning. I mean, and then I'm, I'm like, what is this? It's just two doors down, and we're in these, like, sweet kind of things. And, and then I hear all of this laughter and stuff. I'm like, oh, I'm going to kill him. I get up. Every student in our youth group was in that room, guys and girls, okay? Big no-no, yeah. Everybody's in there. There is this spread of food like you would not believe, a, 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 like a... What are those things called? You know, like bringing all the light. Yeah. I mean, all, I mean, the place is decorated. People are dancing. They're having fun. They're hanging out. I and mean, it's like a rave. <laughs> and, and what had happened is all week long in the cafeteria, David would take food and put it in his pockets and stuff. Like he's, he's making like meat and cheese and cookies and everything. Like he's getting it fruit and he, and he like spreads it all out. And he has like all the meat rolled up and he got toothpicks and stuck it in there. Like, like at parties and stuff. Like and he, and he had all this stuff spread out and everybody's partying in there. And I walk in and it's like a bad teen 90s movie because the movie just, or the, the music just stops. And they're all staring at me and they're like, somebody's dead and we're glad it's David. We know he's that kid. Like. <laughs> Like, we're all going to get killed and kicked out of here and never get to go to move again and all this stuff. And I go, what is going on? And I'm mad. I was like, this is going to get us all, oh, I'm, I'm so angry. And David goes, you told me to lead by example. I only hang out with cool kids. So I wanted everybody to have a good time. I still wanted to kill him. <laughs> but I contained myself and I go, well, somebody make me a sandwich then. And they, and man, the place like erupted. Like they were like, ah, music's back on. I eat a quick sandwich and I go to bed. And I just let it, <laughs> let it go. Forgive me, CIY, you know. One, one more, and one, one more and I'll close out. One more and I'll close out. Uh, little girl Katie, super sweet. Y'all know, you know that kid that's super sweet. Wouldn't hurt a fly. So innocent. Like, loves Jesus with all of her heart. And we're down in Mexico. And, and like, we're building this church and stuff. And, and Katie, Katie um, like, makes friends with this little boy about five, six years old. And he's, like, helping her paint and helping her do all this stuff. And it's, like, her buddy. And she'd give, her, give him half of her sandwich at lunchtime and all of this stuff. And, and, and like, the the. The boy had some issues at home kind of thing, like with, with parents and all that. And so last day is bittersweet. And if you've done these kinds of things, you know the way it is. Like you accomplished your mission. It's time to go home. Hugging people that you've built a relationship. And it's, it's bittersweet. Like it's time to go. And, but, man, she was going to miss this kid and, and everything. And so we get on the, we get on the bus. And, and I'm head counting and all this good stuff. And, and then one of the boys is like, hey, you should probably go talk to Katie. I was like, yeah, she's probably upset. Like, she was really bonding there. And I was like, Katie, you doing okay? And she goes, mm-hmm. And it was kind of weird. It's like, not her, she's like, uh-huh. And like, wouldn't look me in the eye. 
like, okay, and so I'd keep going, doing my business, and then somebody else was like, mm, Katie, and I was like, what? It's like, what's going on? And I go, Katie, what, why do people keep telling me to come up, like, what, what's going on? And then I see the blanket under her leg move. <laughs> now, we're driving at this point, like, we, we're several blocks away, and out comes a little brown boy. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, we are not kidnapping a child. <laughs> of which she started to tell me how on the first day she saw what presumably was the dad and this kid was sweeping and they started arguing in Spanish and she knew Spanish and the, and the, and the dad slapped the boy. And he went walk, walked off crying and she chased him down and that's how they became friends. And her dad was a lawyer and, they, and three of her siblings were adopted and she knew if she could get that kid home that he'd be in their family. I'm like, but he has a mom and a dad. And I understand that may not be perfect, but we can't steal a child. <laughs> and I was the biggest jerk putting that kid off of the bus as all of the youth group is like, no, no, this is like siding with Katie. And I'm the bad guy. Right motive, wrong method. Every single one of them. And it all started with a fearless young man that had a little bit of mild autism who went around on the last day of move and looked everybody in the eye and said, I love you, and told them exactly why. And all of these people were sparked from a revival from the last day. And one kid that didn't think that he had anything to offer, and he offered us everything because he gave us love. And they all messed it up. But I'm telling you, somebody has to go first. Somebody has to go first. Somebody's got to go first today. Today. Because there are people at home that need you. And perfect love drives out fear. Bob, I can't do those sort of things. What if I make a mistake? What if I get it wrong? They all got it wrong. They all did. And it was so right. And it so expanded the kingdom of God. And they're all doing phenomenal things today because of one kid. One kid that thought he had nothing to offer and he overcame his fear and he started doing it. A girl, Gretchen, she was valedictorian, super smart, huge high school. And, and she came to me and like, Bob, I, I wrote a speech, but it's sharing Jesus. And, and I want to, you know, I want to I share Jesus as, as I speak in high school, you know, for the graduation ceremony. And she's like, can you help me edit it? And I read it, and it shared the gospel, and it was perfect. I didn't touch it. I helped her a little bit with her with her public presentation skills, and, and that was about it. And, and the principal would not let her, let her read the speech. Like, they wouldn't do it because it talked about Jesus so much. And, and then her parents got involved, and superintendent, and it goes to the school board, and everybody's lawyering, lawyering up, and they finally agreed, well, you could, have, you could give the speech, but you cannot pray at the end. You can't pray at the end. And she gives this phenomenal speech, in three minutes shares the gospel, and then, instead of praying, she goes... This is my prayer for Ironwood High School. And she just reads a prayer. Oh, she got it wrong and so right. When you give in to fear, you will give up on love. When you give in to fear, you will give up on love. Perfect love drives out fear. Go be that kid. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the graduation of Ironwood's high school class of 2006. It has been an amazing four years for us all, with new friends, exciting classes, and wonderful opportunities. For me, high school has been a chance to live an abundant life made possible by my dearest friend, Jesus Christ. I would not be standing here tonight if it weren't for him, so I would like to take a few moments and share with you why I believe this to be true. He has a special plan for us all, and I believe that he also loves us dearly. He proved this by paying the price for our sins, by dying on the cross and rising from the dead 2,000 years ago. Since I accepted that fact, I have lived a plentiful life in his grace and it gives me a joy that never runs dry. You see, friends, he gives me the strength I need when my road gets rocky. He was there to pick me up when my grandmother passed away, and he was there when a dearly beloved family member was diagnosed with a debilitated disease called MS. 
but he also gave me a model for living life in his book, The Bible. It is my reason for holding on to abstinence, modesty, kindness, and always doing my personal best. I believe life is all about God, and I don't want to live one second without the promise of heaven or the love that God offers. They are his free gifts to everyone, and I hope that you all consider living in those freedoms. I believe there are consequences for what we do on this earth, but I am truly grateful that Jesus paid the price for us by taking away the punishment we deserve because of our sin so that we could live abundant lives. This is my prayer for Ironwood. Dear Lord, we are gathered here together to celebrate one of life's special moments. I am grateful that Ironwood has been a place where those that wished it could live out personal beliefs through praying at the flagpole and joining Christian clubs. But also, I would like to give you the honor and glory for getting us safely through high school and to this night of nights. Thank you for offering your forgiveness and for sending your son to endure what we deserve so that we could walk through life in your forgiveness. We receive it now, Father, with humble hearts and grateful hands. Please guide the students here tonight as we embark on the incredible journey of life Give us shelter when storms strike, but also give us lives that abound with the joy and contentment that only come from you. We recognize that all good things come from you, and we thank you especially for this wonderful night. Amen, and God bless you all.